Hello, everyone. Right, OK, family favourites. We're adding again. Um, actually, we've got two fabulous, fabulous crafty bags from Groves, which are adding to our family favourites bundle, which is already looking mightily, mightily impressive, by the way. Look at all of these. We're now adding these uh, to it. All you've got to do is shop in any of our family favourite shows between now and quarter to six on Monday. We're picking a winner then, announcing it 10 to six on Monday night, and, and one person wins all of those goodies. As simple as that. Right, time for a craft along right now, and it's a knitting craft along. Week one is right now, then we will have week two next Saturday night at nine o'clock, and then week three in two weeks' time, same time, same place, Saturday night at nine o'clock. So if you want to get involved, not too late, um, order it right now. It's just five pounds for all the materials you need to make this cute little catty. <laughs> little pussy cat, love it, love it, love it. Uh, 177116 is your item number if you would like to get involved right now because it's time for our knitting craft along with the one and only, our wonderful Catherine. Good evening. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, well, well welcome this evening. There oh, you go, lovely see? to be here. It really is. Uh, yes, thank you for joining us. Of course, I started on Thursday with the crochet. That will be back next Thursday. This is all about the knitting. Now, a little word or two about the project itself you will probably have just noticed that the sample we've got in the studio is completely different yarn to that that you've been sent you should have been sent what I've got here now I am just going to let you know as well although I've already made a start on this and I've got uh, various different pieces to show you during demonstration I'm going to use a totally different yarn there is a reason for that the reason is it's a thicker chunkier yarn I'm going to work with thicker needles as well just so it makes it easier for everybody to see so you're going to work with the yarn that you've been sent obviously I've got a piece that's prepped here so if I just show you this it doesn't look much like a cat at all at the moment it looks very very strange it's almost like a, a number eight without the holes in there <laughs> Shall we hold it that way up? Uh, right, you can also probably see why it's not a good idea for me to demo with this because you can't, this is why I'm using a different yarn because the stitches are quite invisible, which is a good thing when you're a beginner because if you've made any mistakes or your tension's not great, you're not really going to notice it. But of course, I do want you to see everything that I'm doing. So, I am using this yarn here. It doesn't matter what colour it is. It doesn't matter what thickness it is. Obviously, it is applicable the size of needle that you want to use to the thickness of yarn. So I am switching up a size uh, simply because I am going with a thicker yarn. Now, I've also got the Millwall Jam holder here, which is brilliant. This means I'm not going to get tangled up. I really like this. I think I'm going to have to buy one of these. Uh, yes, we've got details at the bottom of the screen for you, but without further ado, let's get going with the craft along. I'm just going to bring in the instructions. If you have got a pen to hand, keep it with you. You might want to write one or two things down. Um, there is a couple of things that we may or may not get to during tonight's show that I want you to write onto your pattern. We probably won't reach that far tonight, but you will need your pattern in front of you because, of course, if you've never knitted before, you need to understand the pattern. So let's start with that actually. Now I have said, decide which colour you wish to start with and then cast on 16 stitches. So that is where we start. We can't do anything without casting on those stitches. Now I am giving you the option of whether you start with the black or the white or cream, whatever you want to call it. I will say, if you are starting with the black, you're probably going to want to switch to the white at some point or vice versa. When you get to the area where the face will be, you will show, of course, the eyes and the nose are going to show it far better on the white. So my suggestion is probably start with the darker one and then switch to the lighter one later. So I'll give you a, a clue as to when I think the, the, the best time to do that is uh, available. So let's get going. You need your needles, of course. I am right-handed. If you're left-handed, there's nothing to stop you having a go. You can knit as well. You're just doing everything the opposite hand to me. Now, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is a slip knot. That's how we're going to start. So because I'm right-handed, I'm just going to hold the yarn in my left hand and I'm just forming a little bit of a loop. So I've got a tail there. We can weave the tail in or stitch that in at the end. We don't have to worry about it at the moment. Probably helpful to make it a little bit longer than you need to start with until you get used to doing this. So with the yarn, I've just formed that loop. What I'm going to do is take 
the tail end of the yarn, so that's the end that's not attached to the ball. I'm going to pass that around the loop that I've got very loosely, so I've formed another loop, and just thread that tail end through the loop that I've just formed. Then when I pull on the loop, I'll put one of my needles in there and pull on the main length of yarn. You can see how that is going to just tighten up nicely to the needle. I am going to do that again for anybody that's missed it. Most of you probably know how to do a slip knot and there are other ways of doing it as well. There's no right or wrong, whatever works, I'm happy with that. So let's just do that again. So we'll form the loop, we'll take the tail end, we will wrap loosely around the loop, so I'm going from front to back and then threading that tail end through the loop that I've just made. So just pulling that through, just grab hold of it, there we are. Put your needle in the first loop and then you can slide that so you've got your first stitch on your needle, okay? Now, because I am right-handed, I'm now going to hold this needle in my left hand and I'm going to pick up the other needle and we're going to get going. Now, I'm I am going to put my glasses on for this uh, just because, yeah, my poor vision isn't great close up anymore. Now, we're going to cast on. We're going to count that as the first stitch. So that loop we've just made is counting as our first stitch. Now, there are different ways of casting on. I'm not going to confuse things and go with the way that I normally do it, the way that I was taught. I'm going to go with the regular way. So if you look for tutorials online, this is probably the way they're going to tell you. As we go throughout the course, I might give you a few hints and tips, things that I do that sort of keep the work a little bit neater as well. Now we've got our second needle. We're going to go in from the front into that loop. Now what you can see, if I'm just going to do this very slowly, I'm going to go into that loop and I'm crossing those needles over. So the needle that I'm just using now is going behind the needle with the loop on there. But the loop is across both needles. You need the length of yarn now, not the tail end, but the, the length of yarn that's attached to the ball of yarn. And I'm just going to wrap that from the back and put it in between the two needles. So in between the cross, let me just take that undone again so I can show you. So you're coming round from the back and crossing it in between the two needles. And if you've got those held together quite tightly, just give it a bit of a pull so that it sits where the loop is at the bottom. And then all you're going to do is, remember I'm right-handed, so the needle now in my right hand, I'm going to start to slide down and pick up that loop. I will do this again, but you, what you need to do at this point is then slip that onto the needle that I'm holding in my left hand because I'm right-handed, opposite way if you're uh, left-handed, of course. So I will do that again. So if you've done that correctly, don't worry, stick with it. Don't pull it undone. I'm only taking it undone for anybody that's, um, you know, not picked up on this yet. So you've got the slip knot on the needle. You're going to go in with the second needle into that slip knot, cross behind the needle that had that stitch on it, take your yarn from the back into the cross itself, pull it down and then take your needle and pick up that stitch. So you've now got a loop on each needle and at this point you're going to pass that loop onto the first needle that had the loop on it. You've now got two stitches. So we're going to repeat that until we've got 16 stitches. So again, needle in, make sure it's crossed behind, yarn round, pull that down, pick up the loop. So you've now got a loop on that needle, the two stitches that we've already made, one loop on the needle that you're working with, and we will just then pass that over onto our other needle. So now we've got three. And this is what you're going to repeat until you get to 16. So if we can all do that now. Now, if you are behind or you're struggling, please do email in studio at the .com. It is important to count at this stage. So I've just done a couple quite quickly. I've got one, two, three, four, five stitches. Okay, so I'm going to keep going until I've got 16. So I'll count out loud now, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, nearly there, fifteen, and one final stitch, 16 stitches. So they're all on one needle. You do get into a bit of a rhythm. Now, the reason I've gone with the pattern that we're working with is because it will teach you the basics. So the casting on is the first start in point. It's going to teach you a knit stitch. It's going to teach you a purl stitch and it's going to teach you how to increase and decrease. Now that might sound a little bit scary if you've never done it before, but it is really, really simple. So now we've cast on. I'm, I'm going to take this really, really slow because I know even though I work very slowly there, because you do pick up that rhythm, you do pick up speed as you learn, but some of you may still be counting those stitches. So as we just move on to the next stage, if you're still adding those stitches, don't worry. I'm just going to speak out loud so if you are listening you can follow on. The next line or the first full line of the instructions tells us to knit. Now I'm showing you an abbreviation in brackets so a K in brackets stands for knit. So to begin with on the pattern that's what I'm doing giving you the full word and then the abbreviation. So we're going to knit each stitch and in brackets at the end it will tell you how many stitches you should have on the needle. Of course we've just cast on 16 so we're staying with 16 on this row. We're just going to simply knit into every single stitch. So how do we do that? Well, that is relatively simple, actually. It's very similar to your casting on, uh, but you're now going to transfer all of those stitches onto the other needle. You're going to work them back onto the other needle. So to begin with, very similar to when you cast on, we're going to take that needle, the one that's currently empty, and we're going to pass that into the stitch, making that cross just as we did when we cast on. We're going to wrap that wool around, that yarn around, just as we did before. When we pull the needle through, instead of passing that stitch onto the needle that I've got on my left, or you may have on your right or left, depending on which hand you are, you're going to take that stitch off. So you've transferred it onto the second needle. I'm going to do that again because it's exactly the same process with every stitch. So into the stitch, so you've got the cross, wrap the yarn around. As you pull that needle through this time and pick up that stitch, you're going to take it off your first needle. So you can see now we've knitted two stitches. You're going to do exactly the same thing with every single stitch that you've got. So I'm going to take this nice and slow. You can keep watching if you wish. You can rewind this, you can catch it later, but I'm just repeating everything that I've just done. So needle in, yarn round, pick up that loop and transfer over. Now at this point, you can count in your head. If you're more comfortable counting, you can do. If you don't drop a stitch, then you shouldn't really need to count so much because you're just working with every stitch that's there. But sometimes when you're a beginner, I find that if you do actually count, it helps you get into that rhythm. It gives you a little bit more confidence as well. You know where you're going with it and it does help. So I'm just going to keep working. Don't worry if you're not quite up to speed with me. I'm repeating the same process and we're going to get right to the very, very end and you can see now, I've now got 15 stitches transferred over onto my second needle and I'm on my last one. So it's just again, repeat exactly what we've done. Needle into that stitch. You're then going to wrap the yarn around, pick up the loop and transfer it over. So now all stitches are on the needle that at the start of this row was originally empty. Now all you need to do now ready for the next row when you've done that is transfer that needle to the other hand so because I'm right-handed I'm now going to transfer that needle into my left hand so all the stitches are on the left hand side if you're left-handed you're going to transfer into your right hand so all your stitches are on the right hand side and then we're ready for row two 
Now, I think I think we might have lost Derek. He looks. <laughs> he looks. I just looked across then, and you looked as though you were really absorbed in what you were doing there. <laughs> I love it. I haven't knitted for ages, you know. Do you know, I was Absolutely. just going to ask, have you ever knitted before? Yeah, my nan taught me when I was when I was a kid, but she didn't teach me casting on or casting off, so ah. I could just do one continuous thing. Um, but I love it. This is very fluffy yarn, though. It is I'm very trying fluffy to, yarn. And I'm going a little bit cross-eyed with it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to persevere. I love it. I want a cat at the end of this. <laughs> Well, we won't see the cat really take shape until week three, but we are going to learn those stitches. Uh, so we're going to keep going because it changes up a little bit for the next row. So obviously, I don't know if anybody's screaming at the screen saying, Catherine, I've not, not finished row one yet. Uh, do let us know by email if we're going at a nice pace for you. If you're managing, let us know. Of course, studio at thecraftstore.com. But I've only got an hour. Uh, you probably will get some homework at the end of this. We'll see how we get on. But now we're going to work on row two. Now, if we look at the instructions, row two says purl in brackets P, because P stands for purl, each stitch. So we're going to do exactly the same stitch for every stitch on the needle. But this time, instead of knitting, we're going to purl. Now, it is a little bit different, this one. So we've transferred that needle over to whichever hand we are. So I'm right-handed, mine's in the left. If you're left-handed, yours in the right. Um, we're going to go with the needle again now. Now, actually, this is a point. This is one of those tips that I may give you straight away. When I was taught to knit, <coughs> sometimes when you start and end a row, you find that the first stitch can be a little bit loose. So there is a trick I can show you, actually, that helps keep that edge nice and firm. And all that is, is to take the first stitch straight off the needle, as though you've, you've stitched it, but you, ha you haven't actually done anything with it. And it's done. That just keeps your work a little bit neater. So if you want to do that, you can. If you don't want to do that, and I've put mine back just to show you, you know, the way that you'll probably see online, but it is a good tip, so I did just mention that there. But we're going to purl now. So what we're going to do, again, we've got an empty needle and we've got all of the stitches on the second needle or the first needle, whichever way you want to look at it. Now for purl, remember back to the last stitch or the last row, we were going in forwards like that. We were going in, we were crossing those needles over. You're actually going to come in to the front of the stitch this time. So I'll just show that again. Rather than going in like that and crossing the stitches over or the needles over, you're coming in and you're, you're coming in. I'm coming in from the right hand side to the left. Again, it will vary depending on which hand you're using. I'm then going to take that yarn and I'm going to wrap it around that needle that is now in front. And I'm going to just take that through. So I've got the loop and again, transfer it off the needle so it's almost a reverse as to what you've just done so let's do the second one needle into the stitch at the front yarn around that stitch pull that through so you can see the loop on the needle and slide it off the needle where the stitches were and you're going to repeat that method so every single stitch is going to be the same on this row. These are your purl stitches. So into the front, wrap around, form the loop, and then slide off the needle that's holding currently the majority of the stitches. And you're just going to repeat that until you get to the end. So I could knit very, very quickly, but I'm not going to speed up to a point that you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just going to get to the end of this row, and hopefully you're following along and you're also purling your stitches now. So at this point, you're still going to have 16 stitches on your needle. And again, you're transferring all of those stitches from one needle to the other, working that yarn as you go. And this is where you start to see your work begin to grow. So final stitch, exactly the same. Needle into the stitch, yarn around the needle, pull that needle through to pick up the loop, and transfer it over. We've now got two rows of knitting. We've got a knit row and we've got a purl row and we should still have 16 stitches. Row number three is slightly different. This is where it gets interesting. 
Are you all right, Derek, over there? Yeah, I, all good. <laughs> you all, look so I'm, relaxed. I'm definitely <laughs> going to be watching this on Rewind as well. <laughs> Right, okay, so where we're at now, we're on to row number three. Now this is, as I say, it gets interesting a little bit here because it says increase in brackets ink, I-N-C. That stands, that's the abbreviation when you see a pattern or you read a knitting pattern, if you see that I-N-C ink, that stands for increase. You're going to increase in your first stitch, knit to the last stitch and increase one stitch at the end of the row which will give you 18 stitches so essentially you're increasing right at the beginning and you're increasing right at the end don't let that scare you that is not difficult so we've got all of those neat stitches again on one needle so i'm just going to pass this needle again into my left hand because i'm right-handed so i'm going to work with the empty needle in my right hand all the stitches are back in my left hand again now that little trick, that little hint I gave you about keeping your work neat, you can't do on this row anyway because you're going to increase into it. So if you slip that stitch off, you won't be able to increase it. So we're leaving everything exactly where it is. We're back to a knit row. So if you remember with knit, we go in from the front, we cross those needles over, we take the yarn and we wrap around the cross and then we pull through. Now normally, we would take that stitch onto the needle and slip it off. In this case, we're not going to do that. Now, I am just going to undo that again so I can repeat this because you need to watch very carefully now. So, needle in, because you're going to knit. So, from front to back, crossing the needle over. Yarn around. Start working. So, you're picking that stitch up as though you're going to slide it off the first needle with all the stitches, but you're not actually going to do that because you need to make an extra stitch from the very first stitch on the needle. So what we do now, you can see we've got the loop ready. We're going to go back in with the point of the needle and we're going to go into the back of that stitch that's still on your needle. I'm going to do that again. Let me just see if I can do that. So while you've got the, the front of the stitch on that one needle, you're going to go back in to the stitch so you're forming that cross again you're going to wrap around the yarn again and now you're going to pull through and slide that off the needle so what you've actually created there is two stitches from one hopefully you've got that do you want me to do that one more time in case anybody's right so i'm just going to unpull that if you've got that don't unpull yours keep it exactly where it was i'm just going to go back down to a single stitch so we'll go again, so needle into the front of the stitch, form the cross with the needles, wrap around. You're now going to slide that needle through to pick up the loop, but instead of sliding it right off the needle that's holding the stitches, you're going to take that point back into the stitch, working through the back of the loop, yarn back round that needle, now you're going to pull through because you formed an extra loop. You're going to take that stitch off the needle. So you've got two stitches from one. Now it gets a little bit easier because you're just repeating exactly what you did before, but you are taking the stitch off every time you wrap that yarn around. So it's a, just a simple single knit stitch now. So into the yarn, form the cross, around the needles, slide through, take the, the stitch off the needle and we're going to do that right until we get to the very last stitch so it's a single knit stitch on every stitch apart from the first one that hopefully you've already done and then when I get to the end to the final stitch I will show you the increase again so you unless the pattern says otherwise you only ever increase in the way that I've shown you. Once you get a little bit more, um, you know, happy with your stitch and you've done a little bit of practice, you can move on to patterns that will have different techniques and different amounts of stitches and patterns and things like that. But at this point, we're keeping it very simple. We're just doing a very, very regular increase and decrease. So I'm now to the very last stitch. So it's just a repeat of how we began. Needle into the stitch, forming the cross. Yarn around the needle, 
pull through, but instead of taking the loop right off that needle, we're going back into the stitch, we're going round again, and then we pull off. So we've just created two stitches from the final stitch. So now you can see, it might be gradual at the moment, but you can see we're starting to grow the work. We've now got three rows on there. You've just done your first increase row. Now, the next row, row number four, is telling us we're back to that purl stitch. We're not increasing, it's just a regular row. We're not doing anything other than just purling in each stitch. So you can see at the end of the row, 18 stitches. You've got 18 already, you're not changing that. So the next row, hopefully, if you're up to speed with us, you're going to manage perfectly because you've already done it. So remember with a purl row, you go in with your needle through the front of the loop, you wrap around your yarn, you pull through and because we're not increasing we can take that right off the needle into the front yarn round pull through take off the needle into the stitch yarn round pull through take off the needle and every single stitch being a purl stitch on this row you are going to work into the front of your stitch now, when, we, when I get to the end of this one, I'm going to show you something and hopefully, this is why I said it's more important for me to use a different yarn so you can see exactly what I'm doing because with the chenille that you've been sent, although it hides lots of mistakes and it's great if your tension isn't good and it gives a lovely effect, you will not be able to see the stitches so easily. So let me just get to the end of this one. I'll explain exactly what I mean. So every single stitch is a purl. There we are. So all stitches now transferred onto the opposite needle and it's grown again. Now, because I've not spun the needle round yet, you can see from the back here, hopefully you can see anyway, you almost get little bumps. That's how you know it's a purl stitch. That's what you'll see on the side where you do your purl rows. If I turn it over, the stitch looks very different. It's almost like a little plait that runs up in rows. Every, every row looks like a little plait, but it's very, very different. Let me just show you again. So that's your knit side. If I turn it over, that is your purl side. Now, I'm not going to complicate things by saying, you know, you can mix them up. You can mix them up when you progress and you do different patterns. But during this pattern, we're going to keep both sides exactly the same. So we're always going to knit on the knit side and we're always going to purl on the purl side. So because we've just done a purl row, let's have a look at row number five now. We know automatically because we've just done a purl, we're going to knit again now. And we're back to that increase. So increase one stitch knit to the last stitch, increase one stitch. So you're basically repeating what you did on row three, but it's growing wider because you're adding two more stitches. So let's go through this one again. So empty needle. I've transferred the needle with all the stitches into my left hand because I'm right-handed. Let me go in with that needle again. Remember with a knit, you go in from the front and you cross the needles over. You wrap from the back you pull to get the loop, but because we're increasing, you don't take that stitch off the needle. You go back into the stitch at the back, wrap around, pull through, and then you remove from the needle. So you've now got two stitches where you had one. And you can see them there. Now you're going to knit again in every single stitch, just as you did before, until you get to the end, and then you're going to increase again. How are you getting on, Derek, with your increasing? Well, actually, I have a little confession to make. I had to go back to the very, very beginning only because I didn't have enough stitches. And, and because, ah. the, because the yarn, because uh, I was having trouble um, seeing the yarn and how many stitches I had on, okay. I didn't have enough. So I decided to do one of those, <laughs> you know when you, you see it on a comedy programme where somebody takes a little thread and it undoes the whole jumper. 
Oh, I decided right. to do yep. that. Got you. But luckily earlier on. So I'm going to have to watch all of this again and go right back to the very, very beginning. OK. Do you know what? You can do that on Rewind. We'll have this hopefully for some time to come. Um, if you need extra help out there as well, you will find other tutorials. But the idea is to craft along. So hopefully, hopefully, if you don't cr crack it straight away, you will go back and watch Rewind so that when you come back next week, we can continue on. Now, I've just very quickly, as Derek was chatting there, I've got to the end of my row. So I'm back to that final stitch. And remember on row number five, it does say to increase again at the end. So it's exactly as we did before. Back into the stitch, yarn around, find that loop, but don't slip the stitch off at this point. Go back into the loop that's remaining on the needle, yarn around, pull that through. And there you've just made two stitches from the one again. And if I just lay this down, and you might find that your, your uh, yarn does curl a little bit. That's natural. Um, different yarns will curl more than others. If I just stretch this out a little bit, you can already see how this is starting to shape on the sides because we're getting wider on the needle. So at this point now, we've just done row number five, you should have 20 stitches. Now, just to be certain, I'm going to count mine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty stitches. So good to go on the next row. Next row, we know we've just knitted, so I think you can see the pattern emerging now. You know you're going to purl the next row. We're not increasing again, it just says purl in each stitch. So very simple again, you're going to stay with the same amount of stitches as the previous row. I can see from the back of my work that it's definitely a purl side because of how the stitches look. And we go again. So all the stitches on the needle are back in my left hand and I'm now ready with the empty needle to transfer them all over again. So now because we're purling, we go in from the front. We wrap that yarn around. We find that loop and we take the stitch off the needle. And we're going to do that right to the very, very end. So you can count as you go. I know I've got 20 stitches. If I want to make sure I'm not losing any, I can count each stitch that I'm doing. But I think really, especially when, once you get going a little bit, you'll realise if you've dropped something. And if you do drop a stitch, don't panic. You can usually pick it up. If you can't, let me just remind everybody, this is a practice piece. This is just get used to stitching, the knit, the purl, the increase, the decrease. Yet, if you lose a stitch, it can form a little hole. There are ways around it. Uh, we can go through that at a later date. If anybody's really, really struggling, I'll repeat again, please do email into the studio and I'll try and help out if you've got any questions or any issues. So I'm back down to my very last stitch again. I'm going to go in from the front, yarn around, pull that loop through and take it off. So all stitches again are transferred from one needle to another. Now you can really start to see it growing a little bit you can really start to see that shape forming. We've got almost a diagonal line appearing on both ends. And because you're increasing at the front and then at the first stitch and then you're increasing at the last stitch, those lines are going opposite. So you're almost forming a V shape if you look at the edges there. So we've done row number five. Number, sorry, what row did we do? We just did the pearl, we did six. So we're on to row seven now. Row seven, you can definitely see a pattern because it says increase one stitch, knit to the last stitch, increase one stitch. So you're right at the end again there and that will give you 22 stitches. So at the moment we've got 20, so we're just increasing at the beginning, we're increasing at the end. So we're gonna end up with two extra stitches on this row as well. We can see that is the knit row just by the stitches that have, have been formed. So we'll go again. So very easy, we're back to knit, so we're into the stitch and we're crossing those needles over. We're wrapping the yarn around and because we're increasing the first one, we're finding that loop. We're not taking the stitch off the needle, we're going in to the back of that stitch. We're wrapping around again, then we take off that loop. So we've now got two stitches where it was just one. 
and once again we'll go to the end of the row repeating that stitch just a single one each time now until we get to the very last stitch you're still very quiet <laughs> Derek. I, I'm a little bit frightened to ask if you're all right <laughs> yeah no 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 I'm fine I'm fine I I, I love I, this yarn is really really cool because actually making a cat out of it is going to be excellent because it, yeah. it's really really nice and um furry it's kind of like it's like it's unlike a lot of yarn that you would have seen before because it's almost like a thread with a teddy bear fluff kind of that's exactly to what it. it's like yes yeah and that does make it i don't know if I'm, my stitches are a little bit tricksy or tight or whatever maybe that's just you know tension of the studio or whatever um so it's taking me a little bit longer um but i'm quite enjoying working with the yarn once you get into that rhythm and the feel of the yarn because it yeah. will also look different to the one that Catherine's using right now well, it, because it's it a different does. type of um, yarn. I've just got to my last stitch where I'm going to increase again but just as we're talking about the yarn if I bring in the piece that I've done with the yarn that everybody's been sent I it might be hard on the camera I can definitely see that I've got this face up on the knit side I can see that's the knit if I flip it over it looks a little bit more um, so it's got lines running through the other way in a sense so yeah. I can see that is the the pearl side probably something I haven't said as well and some of you may be thinking where we've started with the cast on is that the bottom of the cat or is it the top of the cat oh, okay yeah in this it's actually the bottom of the cat but we're actually going to create a piece that is symmetrical we're going to go inwards at the beginning when we start to decrease and then we're going to increase and come out again but the knit stitch does run in a particular way. So where we've cast on would be the bottom of our cat. I will at this point say as well, if you do stick with it to week three, I think we can probably turn the cat into an owl as well. It may not have to be a cat. Okay. So you might, I might be able to give you choices of what you can do with the finished nice. pieces. You can also weight them as well. So if you wanted to put some rice or some sort of weighting in there, you could use them as a little bit of a, a pattern holder or uh, something to weight your tablecloth down or, you know, just to make it sit well as well. So it's just a fun little project to get used to those stitches. It's really cute. I love it. I think it's brilliant. Well, if everybody's keeping up with me, hopefully they're on row number seven and I've just got to the very last stitch. So I know that last stitch again is an increase. So I'm just going to go into the stitch, round, pull that loop through. But of course, with increasing, I'm not taking it off yet. I've got to go back into the stitch, yarn round again. Then I will pick up the second loop and then take it off the needle. So we've now got or should have 22 stitches. Again, it's worth checking at this point, so I'll do mine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. So we're, we're good to go again. Row number eight. Very easy. We're back to that pearl stitch again. We're not increasing at all on any of the pearl rows we're just doing it on the knit rows so row number eight pearl in each stitch so you're going to stick with the 22 stitches so again when you get your needle in the right hand being a pearl row you can see the difference in the stitch again and we're going to go yet again now there is a name for the stitch that we're doing where you do a row of knit you do a row of pearl it's called stocking stitch how oh, is it? Yeah. So if you see an abbreviation, SS, that is your stocking stitch. So because I'm doing a purl row now, I'm working those stitches into the front of the loop, wrapping around from the front, pulling through and transferring that stitch over. So when you hear that phrase quite a lot, knit one, purl one, that means one row, not one um, stitch. Or do, it, do sometimes you, you, you yeah, alternate? Uh, on the same you row? You can do, oh, the, okay, yes right. you can do. Uh, I think it's moss stitch that you would you would use a combination of knit and purl together and then alternate as you go along. I mean if you've seen jumpers that have been hand knitted you'll see cable designs, you'll see different colours, you'll see lots of different stitches. Mm. Um, there's some beautiful stitches such as blackberry stitch, that's a very nice one, bobble stitches. We can do all of this with knitting and with crochet but of course we're aiming this at beginners 
or people that have gone a little bit rusty, maybe they've learnt in the past, Derek, and they, they need a recap, then this is aimed at those people. Maybe something that they've always wanted to try and never known where to start. So hopefully we've given them the kit to be able to get going. It's a really good idea, I think. This is, this is brilliant because you get pretty much three hours of uninterrupted uh, tuition. He says I'm interrupting at the moment, <laughs> but, but we're all knitting away, I know. But you know what I mean. Um, but for a fiver, you get all the bits and pieces and yeah. you come away with something um, uh, and, and that sense of achievement as well of something you may never have tried before. Definitely. Now, although this is quite repetitive, and it will be, I want to get to a stage during this hour, and I've just glanced at the clock. Hopefully, we're going to hit this right where I want it to fall. Um, we're going to continue a couple more rows, or one or two more rows. Then we're going to move on to homework um, that you're going to be given, probably for next week. So that means you can continue on and then we'll start something a little bit different next week. So let me move to the next row. We've just done row number eight. I'm on row number nine. If it does help to tick these rows off if, as you work them, don't be worried about marking onto your, your paper. You know, you can scribble on it, you can write on it, you can keep it in a separate notebook. But if you think you're getting confused on which row, just, just put a little tick next to it so you know you've done it. So row number nine is the next one. And it's, again, we're just repeating the method. We're increasing. And now I've started to sort of abbreviate in a different way. So instead of increase one stitch, I've just put increase because we are going to just increase one stitch each time. So okay. ink, I've, I've now just gone to that ab abbreviation. <laughs> you should have got used to that. You've seen the brackets. So you should know what that means now. Increase, knit to last stitch, increase one stitch. So it's basically an increase at the front, at the first stitch, and increase at the last stitch. And because it's knit, we're forming that cross again. We're going around the back of the needle. We're pulling that loop through. We're going back into the stitch before we take it off the needle, round with the yarn again, pull through. So we've got two stitches from the one. And now I'm going to work right the way down to the very last stitch. And then we'll increase in the final stitch. So I do apologise again if I'm speeding ahead a little bit. But because you can see the, the method that we've got here, even if you're not quite up to the same row as I am, as long as you know where to increase and how to do it, you seriously can catch up afterwards. So don't feel pressure that you've got to keep up with me at all points. Obviously, you know, we are limited to what we can do in an hour. I have got to show you so much so that you can go away and continue with this. Or if you feel happy, you can unpull it and start again. You know, if you're not happy with what you've done, but you've got the technique, that's entirely up to you if you want to start again ready for next week. This isn't a big project. So, you know, if you do start again, it's not the end of the world. It's something, you know, you can pick up and just go with. Right, I'm on to the final stitch again. I'm sure everybody's got this by now. But again, we'll go into the stitch wrap around, pick up the loop, but we're not taking it off the needle. We're going back into the stitch and then we're going to take the second stitch and slip off. And there we are. How are you getting on, Derek? Well, you know what? I, I, am, I, am, just, I am just knitting away because I realised that as the presenter, because we're doing loads and loads of other things at the same time, this is my excuse and I'm sticking to it, uh, <laughs> is that what I'll do is I'll go back to the rewind video, but I'm going to take my needles and I'm going to take my yarn with me as well, because at the moment I'm just knitting away the same 15 stitches over and over again. <laughs> I haven't purled, I haven't increased. I've been listening to everything you've said, but because I, I lost track at the beginning, um, because I didn't cast on correctly, I mean, I may not have cast on correctly this time, but I've got a nice little knitting going on. There's something, Aww. there's something going. It might be a smaller cat than yours, but you know what? <laughs> That's okay. It's going to make it there. Uh, it's got a bit of an update, actually. Um, if you want to join in in the craft along, it's been so, so busy that actually we were going to have to just stop proceedings in terms of new people joining us actually but what we've managed to do um, is we've managed to find alternative yarns so if you're buying the kit from here on in 
technically it had gone, but we've managed to find some different yarns. So your yarns will may now from here on in vary from the colours that you've got here, but it will be two different colours. Now note also that you do get this toy, the stuffing for the cat you do. as well. You do get that, plus your needles, plus your two balls of yarn there as well, plus the complete instruction which um, Catherine's working us through right now, uh, which she's very kindly created um, from Sugar Buttons, of course, that we all know and absolutely love. So you can still join in. So if you're thinking, OK, well, you've started now. It's a bit too late for me. Not at all. Same £5 note. Remember, show number one will be on Rewind for the next, what is it, 60 days or so. The next live show will be next Saturday night. If you order right now, we will endeavour to have everything to you before week two, um, before next um, Saturday. So you'll have some chance to catch up from the Rewind video of this one and then come on and join us. Obviously, if you're watching this on Rewind in the future, that might not be the case. <laughs> Complicated at all. Um, we've had an email in as well from Adam is crafting. Oh. Oh. Our Adam. Is it Adam, Adam Humphreys? The other Adam. Oh. The, oh. Oh. Fantastic. And is, is the other Adam managing to, to follow? I think we need, I think we need we a know? picture of progress. I think we need a picture <laughs> of progress, don't we? I am loving that. It, it is just so relaxing as well, isn't it? When you it, get it into is. the whole rhythm yeah. of it. Yeah, it is. It really is very, very relaxing. I'd forgotten. I haven't, I haven't knitted for many many years now so it's quite nice just to get back into the yeah. way of me and i'm left-handed as well which as on thursday on the crochet for me is kind of i, I don't know it's kind of getting you getting your head around it a little yeah. bit if you are a left-hander aren't you and of course you're right-handed and yeah. most people um learn knitting and crochet right -handed, exactly i mean i have had feedback from the crochet as well derek people saying you know i'm left-handed and i managed to do it yeah. um i'm just going to make a little point if i may because this is now applicable to this show as well i do know that with the crochet itself after the initial stock again because this has been so busy on the kits we far busier than we ever expected so a substitute yarn was used for the crochet kits as well i know some of you found that a little bit harder to work with because it was thinner don't give up on it. Please don't give up on it. Don't worry about the tension. Don't worry if you drop stitches. Get the method right. You can move on from that. You can use your own yarn. I'm using, I did explain why I'm using a different yarn so it makes it easy for you to see. I'm using a, a larger needle because my yarn is thicker. You know, if you've got scraps of yarn, if you want to do a stripy cut, you can do that. Yeah. You know, if if you decide, you know, you want to add in your own bits as well. Something just go back to the kit on the, the cut as well. You do get the toy eyes in there. I know um, they're included as oh, well. Yes, you do. Shall I yeah. show you? Um, again, if, if this ultimately is going to be something to pass on to the children to play with, just be aware of that because yeah. they are sort of movable pieces. Yeah. And we, we will. I will them. make a good point about those when we get to those yeah. when we're using those but you can stitch dirt, eyes yeah. in as well i guess if you want to yeah can't you down the okay line. yeah right oh we've had an e another email oh from jean who's knitted for years but thinks she can always learn so she's taking part Aww. and she did matthew palmer's um paint along as well oh fantastic lovely. Great. These Lovely. are great, these craft alongs, they? Aren't are, they? they really, really, they are really are. And feedback is important, you know, whether it's good or bad. If you've managed it, if there's something that is an issue, we take that on board and we'll pass that over to, to the relevant people who pack the kits together and choose the materials. So please, 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 if you've got any feedback, do email in or contact us in some way and we will pass that feedback forward. Right, OK, now we've got about eight minutes left. Do you know, this should time, this is really good. I was so scared on Thursday <laughs> that things wouldn't fall into place and I think we're going to hit it right in the right place again tonight Perfect. so we're now on row 10 but actually if you look at your instructions it says 10 to 14 now the reason it does that is because rows 10 right through to row 14 are going to be exactly the same so rather than doing 10 11 12 13 14 and just you know repeating the exact same words we do it under one line. This is this is how a pattern is written. This is what you would expect. Is this the tummy then? Um, well, we've just increased. So yeah, we kind of form in the tummy area. Row 10 to 14, because every row is exactly the same, 
and we're not doing any increase or decrease. So we're now kind of straightening the sides up a little bit again. Oh, okay. Okay. So it does tell you work alternate knit and purl rows starting with a purl row. Now I can see as I transfer that needle with all the stitches back into my left hand, I can see it's a purl row that I'm starting with. So I know I'm right. So when it says alternate knit and purl rows, it is literally that. You're going to start with a, a full row of purl. The next row is going to be a full row of knit, back to a purl, back to a knit. So very easy at this point. So we're going, I'm going to a purl, so I'm going in from the front. And I'm going to wrap around. I'm going to take that loop and transfer the stitch over. So that is all I'm going to do the whole way across this row. So into the front, yarn around, pull that loop through, take it off the needle. Now, the homework, actually, I might let people off this week. I might let you off with homework this week and give you extra homework next week. <laughs> yeah, I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> because whatever we're we're creating at the moment you're going to do twice you're going to new, need two pieces because we're only making the front or the back of the cut oh the okay right yeah. so so either way oh so you've got no homework this week so we'd i think i think what i'm going to do is not give homework this week okay twice as much um, next week yeah because we're going to start decreasing and we haven't gone through the decrease so i think it would be fairer to sort of say, do you know what? Yeah. I'll be kind this week, but next week double homework. Do you know the more I build up, and I am just knitting. I'm sorry, I'm I've because I fell oh, by the wayside quite early, um, but I've just been knitting and knitting and knitting, and the texture of this it is like lovely. furry yarn, yeah, it and is I'm lovely. just knitting it. It's just it is just so lovely and and. Tactile. It is. It's absolutely beautiful Look, to feel. I mean, it I haven't really got is. anything majorly impressive to show you there. That's it, I'm afraid, <laughs> Miss. So maybe I have yeah, got some homework. That's looking good to me. We can see the stitches. We yeah. can see. Do you know, I feel more like a school mum every day because I'm look, I'm look. I have to look over my glasses for yeah. far away because it's just close, Penny. Yeah, it's I, taking me back. I don't back. feel rather school mum-ish tonight. Yeah, it, it's taking me back. But you're far more friendly than than any of the teachers I remember. I have to tell you that. <laughs> but I'm but I'm still looking forward to the bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got five minutes. Uh, yeah, I might I might have to give detention. He is behaving himself, so you know we're all right. <laughs> I've been very quiet. I was never this good at school. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> right now, I've just done row ten, so I know it's a pearl row. So row eleven, which is we've we've just read the instructions. We know it's going to be a knit, and I can see with my my work it's a knit. I'm just going to at this point because I know we haven't got long left. If you started with your dark colour yarn in the fluffy yarn, when you come back next week, I'm going to get you to switch to the light colour. So you're going to have a stripe around the bottom of your cat. Oh, okay. cute. So we'll switch. You have got more yarn than you will need for one project here as well. You probably will end up making different size cats and other things or owls, whatever we end up making with it. Uh, I think it would be nice to give you a choice, wouldn't it? Right, now I'm on row 11. So stick with whatever, whatever colour you've got right up to row number 14. That's where we're going to end it today. I'm on a knit row again, so I'm going back into the stitch, yarn from the back, and I'm going to knit. So we now, we really are just repeating what we've been doing. So I am going to speed up just a little bit, Derek, just could, so um, I can get to the end of these rows. You could make a little mouse for the cat to chase, couldn't you? You could. Literally for yeah, the real cat you to could. chase if you want to, couldn't you? You certainly could. My cats would love a little mouse to chase around. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you've, it's amazing what you can create with two needles and a ball of yarn. Wait until we start. Do you know, if this keeps going, we could be doing all sorts of fancy stitches by the end of it, you know. Oh. We could do next stage. So we could be creating those blackberry stitches and cable stitches. And I'm not going to jump ahead too far because I don't want to complicate things and scare people. But um, yeah, 
we just keep going now you can see how my yarn is actually curling up a little bit more honestly don't worry about that that will all flatten out when you come to put everything together um i started with row 10 which was a pearl i've just done row 11 which is a knit so 12 is going to be another pearl 13 is going to be a knit and 14 is going to be a pearl and if you haven't got that far then you have got that little bit of homework because that's where i want you to get to anybody that's kept up or has gone ahead and is already at row 14 no homework for you well done <laughs> <laughs> i'm loving this it's great it's a bit scary though it's a bit scary i'm coming with my cane next week so i can tell a you bit off scary <laughs> I'm not, sh I'm not sure if I'm here for any of the other ones of these. I feel like oh, I should um, polish my shoes if yeah. I'm back another time. <laughs> <laughs> Straighten my tie. Well, I probably shouldn't say this because I know things have changed a lot since I was at school, but my teacher, he was really scary. He used to have a, he used to have a meter stick and he used to whack it on the table to scare us all. But then we used to have blackboards and chalk and he used to rub yeah. out the chalk and the... He used to throw the blackboard rubber at us. And, and they were like really, really sodden. They, uh, they, they, were, they were like solid. They were like the end of a broomstick. They were. I mean, and so I've had a few of those fly <laughs> past my head as well. You could end up with like serious injuries. I mean, these <laughs> days that would be, you'd be straight in court you, Monday morning, wouldn't you? You but would, back you Back in would. the day, like they wouldn't think yeah. twice about it. Because I was the one that always sat at the back of the class doing an impersonation of the teacher, but there were certain <laughs> teachers, like you say, that you would. There's no way you would have stepped out of line for fear of of the uh, board rubber hitting you square on the head. <laughs> I'm sure my mum knew sometimes that when my blazer had a great big chalk mark because you could never get it out oh. of a blazer, that it was like you've been up to no good again, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've been a cheeky monkey again, haven't you? Oh, do you know? Just as Catherine's oh. getting to the end of this show, I'm just going to remind yeah. you, remember, you can carry on and you can order and you can become part of this craft along. This is just week one, week two, next Saturday night, nine o'clock, week three, two weeks' time, Saturday night, nine o'clock. A fiver gets you all the materials you need to be able to craft along and make your gorgeous caps. Now, your yarn will vary from what you see from there right now because it's been so, so busy. So no homework, miss. No homework, unless you've not got to row 14 and you need to stick with it until you reach that point. I'm on row 14 now. That means I get to go home as well. Fabulous. Amazing. And go for one of those yarn holders as well. They're brilliant. I love definitely. those. Yeah. They're super awesome. Uh, let's do it all again with Miss next Saturday 